Hello again everyone, I'm Gene with Enjoy Beekeeping and this is the first video I'm doing for 2021 and it's great to be back and I'm glad that you're here and what a weird year 2020 was, right? With the pandemic, which is still out there and lockdowns and stuff that we haven't had to deal with, probably none of us in our lifetimes. And I wanted to talk to you about something today that's a new term, it's called pandemic fatigue. And so uh, we're going to talk about that just for a minute, and we're also going to talk about beekeeping stuff too. So stay tuned. So that term, pandemic fatigue, uh, what that's all associated with is the fact that, you know, now we have restricted movement. We're just being advised to kind of uh, not mingle, uh, social distance, and to not spread any kind of diseases or viruses. And so unfortunately, though, it's kind of, you know, it's been hard for people um, because they haven't been able to see their friends or family as much as we're used to. And there's been uh, an, an increase in depression rates and anxiety and even suicide, sadly. So I wanted to use this time in this video to address just a little bit of that with you today because I, I have some helpful tips that can definitely help you if you put them into practice. So pandemic fatigue uh, with the social distance, number one, it is true that we, we may want to maintain social distance so that we don't spread viruses, but we don't want to be disconnected socially. So that's very important. So um, if, if, you're, if you're one of those people that just loves being with other people, this has been really tough for those folks. Um, and so you don't want to disconnect yourself socially. So take advantage of all the technology that we have at our fingertips. So if you've got a cell phone or a smartphone, um, you can do FaceTime, you can do um, uh, Zoom. Zoom is a really good one, by the way. So if you've got some family that you haven't seen uh, in different parts of the world even, you can take advantage of seeing them through Zoom. So you can uh, download that app and that's a really great way to stay connected. Uh, speaking on the phone, it is true that we can send text messages, but because of this particular situation of the socially being disconnected somewhat, it is far better for our emotional health and well-being if we have conversation with people. So I urge you to take full advantage of the technology that we have in order to do that. Now, of course, you still can be with people, but you just gotta kind of be cognizant of the fact that, you know, we're dealing with a virus, and so we don't want to uh, stress people out, we don't want to make anyone sick, and we don't wanna be sick either. So we want to maintain uh, that healthy respect for the situation. As I was editing this video, I realized there was one more important item that I wanted to add, so there's gonna be a total of four. I'll call this one 1A, and that is no news, or at least limit the amount of news that you allow yourself to take in. You can really stress yourself out with too much news. So a little goes a long way. You can really keep current, even if you watch news maybe just once a week. You don't need to watch it daily. Um, especially before bed. So limit the amount of news that you expose yourself to. There seems like there's plenty of things going crazy in the world. Um, and just, uh, just take one day at a time. And uh, if you're gonna watch the news, maybe catch it in the morning. Um, and it doesn't have to be every day. Just enough to keep yourself informed of what's going on, but don't let it stress you out. Another thing is that uh, studies have shown that just the fact that we're outside and getting physical movement is good for our emotional and physical and mental well-being. So there's a, it's a win-win-win all the way around. So you get outside, you see the sunshine, it's good for all those feel-good chemicals and hormones in your body and that will help you feel better. And so, so take full advantage of that. And that leads me right into 
beekeeping. So for those of you that have already been watching my channel, you know that's what I talk about is beekeeping and all the stuff that goes with it. But if you're not, you know, one of my regular subscribers on Enjoy Beekeeping, um, that's what I want to talk to you about. Starting a hobby is one of the best ways that you can beat pandemic fatigue, in addition to the things that we've already talked about. So what better hobby than beekeeping? And I'm going to tell you, I'll, I'll lay it out for you why I think beekeeping is probably one of the best hobbies for almost any age group. First off, uh, beekeeping for me um, has been kind of like going down a rabbit hole thoroughly enjoying the journey, by the way. So when, you know, Alice in Wonderland, how deep does the rabbit hole go? Well, when you keep bees, you can keep bees for years and years and years and years and still learn something. And I think that has been very intriguing for me because you, uh, you think you know a lot or you may think you know a lot, I, uh, but I'm amazed at how many little subtle things I pick up along the way every year that I keep bees, every season that I keep bees, every time I open a hive, I still learn something. So it's not like a, a book where you just read it and you're done and, and you know, why read it a hundred times? It's the same book over and over, not with beekeeping. It's almost unique. It's a very unique experience each time you delve into a hive. So for that, for me, has been very stimulating mentally. I love the challenge. And it's also very rewarding in the fact that you can have a great sense of accomplishment when you set up your hive and your bees are in and they're busy working and you get to harvest some honey and you get through your first winter. That itself is a major milestone for beekeepers, especially if you're just starting off. You want to get your bees through that first winter. The other thing that I thoroughly enjoyed about my journey in beekeeping is the fact that not only was it keeping bees and being outdoors, which I totally love, and um, it's so good for you to be outside, uh, to be connected uh, with nature, it is totally therapeutic. Uh, you can probably Google all kinds of research on the benefits of being outside, so I'm not going to, you know, lay out all kinds of research on you, but you, you can do it yourself if you don't believe me, but I'm sure you probably agree. Uh, the other thing about beekeeping for me is that I wanted to build my own equipment, but I was not a carpenter and probably could never say that I am, but I build a ton of stuff. And just because I've built so much stuff, I've, I've gotten fairly decent at it. And so for me, that's been very rewarding. I've got a big stack of frames that I'm working on. So this is how I'm beating my pandemic fatigue. I've got a mission in front of me right now. I'm trying to get ready for springtime and I've got uh, 500 frames that I'm putting together and I had to cut all the, the parts for the frames out of raw materials. It's not like I chopped down the tree, but I just had boards and I had to make each and every uh, top bar and all the frame arms and the bottom bars and so forth. And so now I'm putting them together. And building frames, if you've watched any of my other videos, I can't stand building frames. I hate it. <laughs> but it still beats the pants off of watching Netflix over and over on the same old stuff that you've seen. I'll go crazy watching Netflix or, or Hulu or any of these other things. I like getting my hands dirty with building um, woodworking, uh, getting into the beehives, getting all sticky with propolis. That's, that's where the real fun is and that's where the enjoyment is. So I want to show you another project that I've been working on. And uh, I decided to organize my wood shop. So if you look at the photo that I'm showing you here, here's, a, uh, here's where all my wood uh, was kept in the corner of my bee barn. And every time I needed a piece of plywood or something, I had to uh, fight and, and try to wrestle and wrangle my way into this corner and pull out whatever piece of lumber I needed and then put it on the table saw and cut it up and so forth. And so I stumbled across, uh, Jay, I think it's Jamie, Jamie Castiglio. She's got a website with some free plans and I downloaded the plan to make this movable wood rack. So it's on wheels and I made uh, just a little bit of modification to it. Um, I think hers calls for um, a 30 or 36 inch width 
for the deck and I just made mine a full 48 inches. I used a full sheet of uh, plywood and I just made it a, a 48 inch and I put two extra wheels on it so it would really hold a lot of weight. So I uh, set one up and so you can watch the uh, the quick video of me building this. So stage one was just building the deck. Stage two uh, was then installing the wheels and like I say her, her plan called for two and I'll, I'll, I'll even put a link for the plan there. You can visit her website uh, and download the plan or I'll put it up on uh, Enjoy Beekeeping. You can download it but I just want to make sure that y'all know where it's from. It's from uh, Miss Jamie Castiglio. Um, she's a handy lady and she's got a whole bunch of really cool projects that you can get into so if you don't want to do beekeeping stuff you can do all kinds of other really uh, satisfying projects so I urge you to check it out and uh, give her a thumbs up too. Um, so I built this uh, wood rack, I got the wheels on and each wheel that I put on was rated for 300 and I think 20 pounds so you know I've got almost a 1800 pound capacity, weight capacity on this movable uh, wood rack and man I'll tell you what, you know what guys it took me all day to make this because I'm not a carpenter so everything I do it takes me longer. Now if I had to build another one today, I could probably build it in half the time. That's just the way it is when you're not you know, um, that proficient at building all different things. Now I, I'm pretty quick at building my bee stuff now because I build it all the time and I can buzz through you know, 100 frames like nothing. But um, I never built one of these before. So it was a little bit of a learning curve and um, it was well worth the time investment. I, I just want, that's what I wanted to get to. It's well worth me stopping what I'm doing as far as building all my equipment for my beekeeping stuff to build this so I could have everything organized and I could, I could easily get my hands on a piece of plywood um, or some dimensional lumber or perhaps some three-quarter pine, whatever it is that I might need, I can easily get to now. So it was way worth it, and I just wanted to share that with you. So if you're looking for some ways to beat pandemic fatigue, these are just a couple of the things that are sure to improve the quality of your daily life. So that's what I want for you, and I just wanna, I wanna give you a real quick update. I don't know if you can see behind me, I've got the observation beehive back here. So if you go back to some of my previous videos, the colony that's living in here now is a very small colony. It's probably about the size of a softball. They're not very big. It was from a cutout that I did up in Blue Ridge, Blue Ridge, Georgia. They were up in, uh, uh, in the wall, the inside wall of a cabin. So I had a friend of a friend call me and I went, I did the extraction. We cut the wall open and we removed the bees, but this was July 4th. And just so that you know, um, the climate zone up in North Georgia, about an hour and a half, two hours away, is different than the climate zone where I live here. Here, where I live, July 4th is the middle of a dearth. July 4th up in Blue Ridge, mm, not yet. Not, not yet and maybe even not really because they, um, like I say, the, the blooms really dry out where I live, but up in North Georgia, sourwood really comes into play during the summertime. So, um, because I moved the bees here, I had to, I had to bring them here where, where my bees are, um, they were kind of getting beat up by the other bees because it was right in the middle of the dearth and they couldn't forage. The other bees were trying to rob and so I had to really reduce their entrance and so we got it all under control. But then I said, you know what, I may as well move them to the observation hive and I've got them in the bee barn right now. So they're with me. They listen to all my 80s music as I'm working. It doesn't seem to bother them. I'm hoping it'll make them more productive come spring. I don't know. Maybe they like a different genre of music. So they'll, maybe they'll tell me. I don't know. But they're here. And every time we get a warm day, and when I say warm, warm in Georgia winters, uh, we're getting a lot of days where it's above 50 degrees. So it might be 55. Man, I'll tell you what, as soon as it hits 55, those bees have been bringing in pollen. And if you look at this video, now this video was shot, I think it was on, um, 
I think it was January 20th or somewhere right in there. It was right around January 20th or 23rd and the temperature broke. It got up to about 56 degrees and they were bringing in pollen like you would not believe. So this is very exciting. Now this for me in my climate zone is letting me know, it's alerting me to the fact that a month from now, by mid-February, the, these temperature breaks are going to keep going more and more up and we're going to get more days where it's maybe 60 degrees or even 64 degrees or something like that. And this is all Fahrenheit for those of you that aren't in the United States. So when I say 55 degrees Fahrenheit, that's what I'm talking about, 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So when it gets that warm, the bees are going to be bringing in a ton of pollen. So any of the colonies that are successfully overwintering, we got a bunch out there, so I'm pretty excited about that. As they're bringing in this pollen and they're building their brood, the ones that are really strong are going to be casting swarms by late February, early March. And these are the ones that I want really bad. Those are the ones I'm most interested in. When I catch swarms every year, I want those early swarms, the earliest possible ones. So when March rolls around, that means I need to have swarm traps up. In fact, I'll probably have mine up and installed no later than the third week of February. So if you're in zone eight, that's where I'm at, um, that's probably a good time for you as well to put those swarm traps up by mid-February, mid right around the 14th or 15th, and then onward to maybe into the 20s. You want to have your swarm traps out because scout bees are going to be taking note as they're foraging of all the potential places that the colony could swarm to. So wild swarms are the best and you want to catch them early. So friends, if you decide you want to get into beekeeping this year as your new cool hobby for 2021, I guarantee that you will absolutely love beekeeping. So make 2021 a way better year than what 2020 might have been for you. And if you want to check out the online courses, you can go to my website, enjoybeekeeping.com or learnbeekeepingonline.com. I have a free introduction to natural beekeeping video that you can just check out and see if you like it. And if you do, then you can go ahead and you know, do the whole thing if you want to. And if you have questions, uh, you're welcome to reach out to me by email. Just uh, That's probably the best way. Uh, just email me, uh, enjoybeekeeping at gmail.com. Uh, if I can help you in any way to get started uh, with your endeavor, I'll be happy to help. And I want to help you to have a great, fun, successful 2021. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and uh, share, share the video with your, uh, with your buddies, your bee buddies that want to get into beekeeping. We'll see you at the next one. Bye-bye.